This is part one out of two Apple tip videos to help you get more out of your Apple Watch. This first video is gonna cover my first 10 favorite tips and tricks. Uh, there's actually more than 10. Uh, there's tips within tips. So it's like 15 tips total. Also in two days, I'm gonna be releasing part two that includes 10 more tips. So make sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss that video. After this, make sure to check out my 10 everyday uses for the Apple Watch video. It's down in the description along with the current Apple Watch lineup. Number one is changing and customizing the watch face. To add or change a watch face, you do a long press on the screen, swipe to the left, hit the plus sign, scroll through and find a face that you like. Let's add this California face. First, you can change some of the options available on the face you're using. And once you find something you like, you could go through and change your shape and colors. Last, complications, which we'll talk about complications in a moment. Now, one of the latest additions is the photos watch face. If you scroll down to photos, and select that watch face, you have a few options. Well, first you can pick what color you want the face to be. You can also pick where the time sits and you can pick what complications you want, like adding the second complication on there. Now to pick which photos end up as the watch face, you would go into the Apple Watch app. There you see the watch face, you select it, and there are your choices, album, photos, or dynamic. Album is gonna pick whatever album you like. I have my Apple Watch Photos album that includes pictures of my dogs. Um, and then there, there is the photo option if you want to do a single or mul multiple photos. You can do a total of 24. And then there's dynamic, and that's going to share different pictures from your memories each day and rotate through those. After you picked out your photos, they're gonna rotate through, but if you wanna change it manually, just tap the screen and it'll go through each photo. Number two is using complications. Complications are basically shortcuts to apps that are on the Apple watch face. I use the infograph watch face because it has the most complications. And by having these complications here, I seldom have to go in and look for an app. The things I use frequently are here. I want to launch a workout, go right into it. I want to look at my to-do list, jump right into it. Um, I want to send a message, jump right into it. All of those things are conveniently placed there. The way that you would pick your complications is you'd pick your watch face, and then you would go in, adjust the settings, color, all that stuff. And here you'll find your complications. You select one, scroll through, and find what you would like to be in that spot. Number three is using the control center. If you swipe up from the bottom of the screen, you have the control center that has all different options in there from putting your, your device into airplane mode, adjusting the Wi-Fi settings, turning off cellular, all of that. I'm not going to cover everything in this control center. I just wanna point out a couple of things. One, I leave my watch in silent. That way I get vibrations and don't get all the noises out of it. Uh, next, the important one, the tip is you can ping your phone from there. So if you're like my wife and you lose your phone all the time, you can just give it a ping. Nice and easy. Next tip in here is theater mode. What theater mode will do is when your screen is off, it'll stay off even if you lift your wrist. Another tip here, if you put your hand over the screen, it's going to go off. Now that it's in theater mode, if I move it around, the face never comes on. What's cool is I could roll up the dial and take a little peek, roll it back down. Kind of cool to turn that off. And if you want to see the time, you can tap the screen, turn it off, swipe up, and you're done there. Another cool thing in the control panel, maybe you need a little extra light, you don't have your phone around, there's a flashlight here. It starts off kind of dim till you turn it on, and then it goes bright. Uh, you also have a flashing one, so maybe for safety, you need to alert someone, that's there, and you have a red option. If you scroll to the bottom of the control center, you could hit edit and rearrange or remove any of the icons and add things that may not be there. Now the last thing in here I wanna show you is this AirPlay icon. You click on that, and here you can pick where audio comes from. 
this is where you would find your AirPods or any other Bluetooth headphones. That leads me to tip number four. It is pairing AirPods or Bluetooth headphones to your Apple Watch. I'm gonna show you how to set that up, but first, I gotta show you the AirPods that I'm using. These were sent over from Colorware. If you're not familiar with them, they make custom painted AirPods, uh, consoles, controllers. These are their two new colors. You have the blaze orange and the acid green. You could get them in two different finishes. You have the matte finish or the glossy finish. You could pick the style of AirPods. These are the latest third gen AirPods. These are the AirPod Pros. I would consider these probably the ultimate gift for somebody who loves AirPods. I've been eyeballing these for years and wanted a pair, but never bought myself a pair. But can you picture that if you got somebody a set of these in their favorite color or their team colors and they opened up the box to see these inside? Mind blown. I know I would be impressed because you don't see custom AirPods. If you want to check these guys out, definitely click their link. I'll put it down in the description. Last thing I'll say about these two colors is they are very visible. So if you lose your AirPods, these could help you out. I believe the orange can be seen from space. Don't quote me on that. I don't, uh, maybe a little asterisk cannot be seen from space. Now let's look at setting these up with our Apple Watch. Really easy to do. You'd want to put them in pairing mode. If you're using using AirPods and they are already paired up with your phone, they are going to show up in the list of devices. But if you are adding something that maybe is an AirPods or you're adding the AirPods directly to it, you're gonna to wanna to put those headphones into pairing mode. And when you put them into pairing mode, you can go into the control panel, select the AirPlay, scroll down to the bottom and click connect device. And then it's going to take a look around for the different devices that are available. Right now, the AirPods Pro Green aren't paired, so I'm going to pair those up and I am connected. So now if I want to take advantage of tip number five, I can listen to books, music, and podcasts that I put on the watch itself. Now to set up the podcast and music settings, you would go into the Apple Watch app, select music, and determine what music you want to add. If by default, it's going to add the recently played music, or I can go in and click add music and pick playlists, artists, albums, genres, any of those on there. Now you only have so much space, so you gotta be careful you don't fill it up with too much music or you can't fit other media on there. Now for podcasts, the setup is similar. You go under podcast, it's going to keep adding episodes from up next, your most current ones, or you could hit custom and choose what shows you wanna save on there. Now once you've set what content goes on the watch you would launch the app so here's the podcast app I can see what is actually on the watch and here are my latest episodes I can go through select one of them if I select one and try to play it it's going to ask me which set of headphones I want to use because you can't use the watch speaker to play audio now if you use audible like I do what you need to do is go into the audible app you find the book you wanna sync, you hit the three dots, and then choose sync to watch. And you'll see that it's preparing to sync, it'll let you know when you're finished, you launch the Audible app, you'll see your content there. Number six is making and receiving phone calls. I love that on the Apple Watch when my phone rings, I can answer it and speak to someone right through the watch. Um, if I wanna make a phone call, I can open up the watch app. There I can dial my favorites, recents, contacts, or even bring up the keypad and dial in a phone number. This can come in really handy, especially if you have some AirPods paired up to it and you don't have your phone nearby. Number seven is dictation. With the Apple Watch, definitely take advantage of using voice and dictation. Works out really well with messages. The accuracy is great. If you wanna to respond to a text, hit the microphone. Everything is going well here today, period. You can see that it picked up the word microphone when I first started talking, period. Now, if you wanna ask a question such as, what do you want to eat today, question mark, 
it will dictate it out for you very accurately. And you can use dictation on apps across the Apple Watch. Another tip that isn't in the countdown, but uh, is related to messages is tap back. I've been using that more on my phone where someone sends a message, you hold down on the message and then send them a thumbs up. You can do the same thing on your Apple Watch by doing a long press on the message and uh, picking whatever you want to send. Now, number eight is one of my favorites. It is using the Apple Watch as a remote for the cameras on your phone. Uh, we take selfies all the time as a family, but it's not always the best way to take pictures. So it is really convenient to take your phone to put it up, lean it up against something, put it on a tripod, then go into your apps, launch the remote, and you're gonna see it opens up the camera app for you. It's gonna open it to the last thing you were doing. Right now, I have it under video. Here, you have some settings. I can choose the front or rear camera and whether or not flash is on or off. I can hit record and start taking advantage of the better cameras that are on the back of the phone. Now, if I wanna do photos or change to another mode, you do need to go to the phone, select that other mode, and set it down, you can see yourself. If you click on the three dots, you see your options to turn the timer off, pick your camera, flash settings, live photo, and HDR on and off. If you wanna hop between the cameras on the backside, you could zoom in or out using the digital crown. Now, number nine is interacting with Siri. You have a total of three different ways to do it. If you go into the phone app, go under Siri, you will see there is listen for, hey Siri, raise to speak, such as lifting your wrist and then talking, or pressing on the digital crown, which I find to be one of the most convenient because you don't have to say a wake word or depend on lifting your wrist, triggering it. Lifting the wrist to trigger it, I find is a little temperamental at times. Now, number 10, one of my favorites is using the wallet on your Apple Watch. I use Apple Pay all the time. It is very convenient. Unfortunately, it's not as convenient with the mask on. That is where the Apple Watch definitely comes in handy. What you can do is double press on the side and that is gonna bring up your wallet and it'll bring up your first credit card you have in there. From there, you would just hover over the terminal till you feel the haptic feedback that it was accepted and you're done paying. You can also access other things such as maybe your Starbucks card. You click on that and you're gonna see the barcode that the cashier was, would scan. It's also great for boarding passes so you don't have to pull out your phone while you're trying to get on a plane. A little double tap on the side to see that boarding pass. Now the bonus tip is if you have not, check out the Apple Watch Sports Loop. To me, it is the most comfortable watch band they make. I was a little skeptical when I got my first one on how well it would hold up. This here is my Nike uh, Sports Loop that here's what it looks like after two years of use. Other than a little dingy, it is nearly perfect. These wick away moisture nicely. I've never had it fall off because of the Velcro that Apple does on it. It's never popped all the way off. Um, can't say enough good things about it. Now, what is your favorite Apple Watch tip? Let us know in the comments section. Next, make sure to check out this video over here for 10 everyday Apple Watch uses. It's a great video. Uh, I'm not just saying it because I made it. It's good, 1.3 million views. Check it out.